our live coverage of the AWS LA Summit. I'm A.M. Grabelny, one of your hosts, joined here by Art, our other host. Art and I are going horseback riding later on today. Icelandic ponies, I think. Um, uh, of course. Yes. Are, is there any other type of horse pony thing to ride? No, AM? Icelandic only and Thai food afterwards. It's a <laughs> must. I've heard that's the combo. <laughs> now, before we go horseback riding, though, we got some friends joining us here from the Open Search team. Kevin, you want to kick us off? You want to start with your intro, please? Certainly. My name is Kevin Fallis. I'm a principal specialist uh, solutions architect with Open Search. And uh, today we're going to talk about a lot of cool things, especially with our new zero ETL integration with S3. But uh, Sam? Hi, I'm Sam Seven. I'm also a principal. Uh, specialist solutions architect with Open Search, uh, tagging along with Kevin to display and demo uh, ADM the zero ADL integrations. All right, Sam's got the most important job on the stage, arguably. Argue, well, maybe our second Thanks. to that. That makes me feel only, better. Only second to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, go I ahead. think we, you know, I mean, I think one of the awesome parts about having these guests here is is, is uh, we get to see a demo as well, and we get to see you know, how we put some of these features into practice here. And so I just want to thank both of you for coming out to do that. So maybe the first thing we want to start with is, is defining what we're talking about here. So for anybody who's out there, does everybody know what Open Search Zero ETL is? And so maybe uh, Kevin or Sam, you want to give us a quick definition, a primer here in a handful of words. Certainly, I don't know if I have a handful of words, but I have a few words. <laughs> So uh, effectively, what the integration with S3 is, is going to enable customers to look at um, you know, different storage tier options so they can cost effectively analyze their data that's sitting on S3 without having to actually bring the data into an open search cluster. Now, what that really affords you <coughs> is um, the ability to leave data where it sits, keep a cost effective profile on your open search cluster from the cost perspective, and analyze that data when you need it, which means no longer do you have to bring the data into an open search cluster. You can just query it using a proxy or a data source that gets set up for integration with open search. Wow, that's pretty cool, because I like anything that involves lowering a customer's cost, right? Mm, definitely. And and you know everybody has a lot of, especially our customers. I mean, S3 is an amazing feature, continues to be. But a lot of customers have a huge amount of data, so querying a large, working with a large set of data can be costly. So it can, right? So doing this type of integration to reduce customers' costs and you know improves performance as well, and you know imp improves their ability to to get information out of that data. Kevin, can we talk a little bit about the challenges faced with ETL? Uh, I've done. I've been around for a bit, just a little <laughs> bit, not too long. I won't tell you how old I am, <laughs> but I've been around long enough to where we had to write our own custom ETL pipelines and jobs, and it True. gets complex. It's it does. seemingly it does. simple when you look at the problem. I need to move data from here to here. And then when you get into it, it's incredibly complex, uh, especially depending on what data you're moving, right? And the motion of the data is actually not the value. The Resulting, hey, this data is now in the system where I can, you know, get value out right. of the data is what's important. So when you all were building the zero ETL integration, what were the challenges you were thinking of that you wanted to solve for customers building these data in motion type pipelines? Well, I think uh, two key use cases always come to mind. First of all, many of our customers in the financial services industries or other um, uh, you know, industries that need some sort of auditing or uh, you know, compliance have this need to have a long-term storage for data. Some people can store up to seven years, right? right? From a compliance perspective. Now, if you were to take all of that data, and let's talk about hundreds of terabytes, put that in an open search cluster and make it searchable, you're gonna have to uh, you know, effectively stand up a lot of infrastructure to bring that in. Now, um, it's more cost-effective to leave the data where it sits on S3 and be able to query it, especially in these long-term needs. So, you know, auditing is one, uh, Long-term retention, so if you want to go back in time to look at things and you're doing infrequently accessing that data for the queries, then parking on S3 makes you know, uh, a, a perfect sense, sense right? for it, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so you know, I'd say auditing and compliance are probably the primary use cases. Uh, when you look at it across the board, some customers you know, want to have a smaller retention period for their data, right? You may go three days or seven days. But you might have a requirement, I want to be able to search back 90 days. 
Well, if you're not searching that data frequently all the time, because there are you know, options on open search for different storage tiers, such as Ultra Warm, and the S30 ETL integration doesn't replace that, it augments that. But in the end, you can carefully choose your cluster requirements, save those costs, and have more of that data sitting on S3 in a format such as Parquet or JSON that is a well-known right. you know, industry standard. And if you need to, you can also engage other tools for analysis. Right. So it doesn't stop you then from engaging and using things like EMR, using Glue to run queries and do other things against your data, and also join other you know, data sources right. together to bring that stuff in. And so it makes total sense for the data that's infrequently accessed to push that onto S3 and then focus on your near real time operational data to be in an open search cluster. And that's really where the value lies. Yeah, I, I, I'm abnormal, admittedly. <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows it. No, yeah, no, There's no, no, no secret I know. here. I, yeah, and we've only been here a short time, and, right, and I we know. already know that. I, yeah. I, but it's cultivated. It's, that, that's that's what I'm sending out. <laughs> I I love curling up with all of my logs and just reading line by line. Uh, it's incredible. You like, look like what the type of Friday person nights, that does it. What yeah, are my right, Friday yeah, nights yeah. for if yeah, not right. for reading I mean, through <laughs> all of my VPC flow that, logs that's and what my all of us ALP did last logs? Friday. Yes, I, I love it, but. Not everyone loves that, right? So, Sam, I know we're going to yeah. get to a demo here. I want to give you enough time to show us all that you've got to show us. We're going to see some of the value, too, that Open Search brings when you get that, that data over there, I'm sure, right? We're going to check out some dashboards. We're not yeah, just going to we'll, see Yeah, we'll, we'll run a few queries, okay, and we'll, we'll take a look and see how the data can be accessed on S3. Obviously, uh, with the, uh, the, the setup and the offering that we have with Zero ETL, there are the ability to install integrations, oh, which are dashboards and visualizations that can go across a variety of data sources that are sitting on S3. Mm. And so what we've done is in that integrations package, we've enabled it so that you don't have to think, just like you're talking about, the data prep is all uh, you know, things that you'll have to understand. Well, Parquet, it has headers, <laughs> and inside those headers, it tells you what the data types are, yeah. so we what infer that. What fields are in there, yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, we do have an integration with Glue Data Catalog, and one of the, the, the um, your requirements to ensure that you can access this data is having it in some sort of Hive Metastore. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable you to provide a definition for what your data looks like. And then, once we establish a connection from OpenSearch into the Glue Data Catalog, then we can infer all those fields and all of the, the, the columns and what their data types are. And all we do then is, in the integrations package, is we grab that definition and we provide a way to do out-of-the-box dashboards and visualizations. You install those and you're able to query your data. Can we see some of this? Yeah, let's I keep was just talking. Saying, we, we can. We can. Let's, yeah, let's take a look. Definitely. Now, so um, the stuff that Sam's going to show today is going to be related to um, using our query workbench. We also have an integration point on the Discover pane. So most of the time, when you go in and you're you're looking at your data, and you're just starting to do your initial investigations or searching for things, you're going to go into what's called the Discover tab. And the Discover tab, effectively, that is a way for you to visualize that data. Mm. And you'll be able to query in uh, languages such as PPL, which is our pipe processing language, SQL, which is, you know, a SQL query yeah, language, right? right? Who doesn't answer, know SQL? Answer 95 compliant, right? And of course, you know the uh, the built-in DQL, the, the the dashboards query language that we have for open search. So you have a broad uh, range of mechanisms to query in the language of your choice for the ones that we have defined at that point in time. But I think you know when we look at it overall, that integration with the Hive Metastore, being able to read that data on S3 and be able to visualize it inside of open search dashboards. You don't have to go to another tool, which is a great thing, right? That's yeah. amazing. It's so awesome. You can grab that. Query the data. We're not bringing all of it in. Now, keep in mind, we may say zero ETL. Some data has to shuffle back into your of cluster, course. right? But the great thing is, is you're not going to define how that is executed. You just give the configuration, and then we read that and data and happens. bring it in. Exactly. All right. So okay. I believe we have a demo up yep. here, Sam, so far. <coughs> so we're in the console. Yeah. So, so it all starts with creating a connection. Uh, this is where you point open search to the S3 folder that you're going to crawl and look for data. Okay. And you're going to set up all the permissions. So I'm going to start by creating a new connection. I'm going to call it 0 ETL. Uh, here's the data source type. It's an Amazon S3 data source with the blue data catalog. So we now create a role for you. So you can pick a role name. Sam, I, I'm sorry. I don't yeah. want to. Can mm -hmm. you uh, increase the, the size a uh, little yeah. bit there? Sorry. Control plus setup. Yes, please. Is this better? 
Uh, yeah. Go a little bit more. Yeah, maybe one, one yeah. or two. Okay. Or you have to okay. break out the microscope. There we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're testing my vision <laughs> skills close. here. That's uh, why we're in glasses today. Uh, yeah. I, ha I have bifocal contacts on. Don't yeah, so we'll get open search to create a new role for us. I'm <laughs> just selecting a, creating a role name. Here's where I'm picking out the bucket. This is where my source data is going to reside. And okay. Open search is going to go look for data in this bucket. And then there's things called checkpoints. We can create accelerations on these data sources. So you can get to the data even faster. So we bring some of the data into open search to enable indexing and doing materialized view. So you can do pre-aggregates and bring the data into open search, so faster lookups okay. and yeah. so on. Yeah. And I just, I just want to touch yeah. one thing on, on the skipping indexes that we have. So imagine you have hundreds, if not thousands, of objects sitting on S3. Yes. You write a query, and technically, you have to scan all those objects. Well, what the skipping index does, it's based on the predicates of your query. It enables us to jump over those objects that are saying S3 that do not need to be involved in the query. Oh, interesting. So in some cases, we get 2x acceleration compared to a Athena query. It's wow. like an exclude, yeah. sounds exactly. like. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like a filter in a way, right? right. You yeah. know? That's yeah. interesting. Avoid the objects that you don't need and include the objects that you do need for your query. I love it. Yeah. Well, I love yeah. it, Like too. an this index in a relational database. It's just it, pointers to what you want. There we, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. For people yeah. out there, relational database? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I've heard of them. Yeah. Oh, Those sorry. are still a thing. They're still a thing. I'm They're a go huge thing, by the way. Yeah, they are. A lot of customers. Okay, sorry, yeah, Sam. No, I that's okay. You. I'm going to go create this data source now. And then once I head out to the open search dashboards, I'm going to go look for my data source. So I have the data sources tab here. So I created a zero ATO uh, data source. I'm just going to click on it. And this is where I'm going to see my default blue database and all the objects that are in there. Now, you would set one of these up per bucket, I would assume. You could, you could set up multiple for different yeah. data sources, okay. depending on your yeah. needs. Um, normally, when you look at a definition, you're not going to mix your VPC flow logs right. with your S3 access logs. Right. Obviously, you know, there's, depending on the format you're using, probably isn't the best way to use the tool. Okay. But you technically will, for every source, you might have a different materialized view, different visualization mechanism, and a different connection source for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You could create a single data source for all your data objects. Exactly. We'll create separate tables here, but I it see. really depends on your org's policy, how you want to organize your Fair data enough. lake, for example. Yeah. So you you may not have access to every bucket. Also. True. Yeah. You will not. Yeah. So here's all my objects that we created. Right. So we go look at the data in there, <coughs> and we create all these objects because it's a Glue catalog. We were able to get the tables of the Glue catalog. So. Just going through all the objects. And uh, Kevin mentioned the acceleration, right? So what are the accelerations available? Oh, let's just create default. The S3. So I can create a skipping index. So this is where we tell the index uh, refresh every 15 minutes. And that's where the checkpoint location comes. And you can add the fields that you want for your skipping index. Uh, so this is where it's intelligently going to pick up only the data that you need. and not. So it skips the data that right. you do not so need. Right, so we're telling it that it can skip certain yes. things. It's yeah. doing the intelligent access. Yeah. Exactly. And then, yeah. you know, you ch we have 15 minutes is the default, right, if I read correctly. Yeah. Yeah. But you can modify that depending upon yeah. the frequency that yes. you think you need it, yeah. whether faster or slower, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. If, if, you yeah. have, if you have data that's ingesting really, really slowly, there's no need to keep on refreshing right. that data because there's going to be less business value unless you have a really tight use case around, right? Exactly, yeah. So I'm so going to quickly an hour or two provide hours, it like a that. checkpoint. And you can see it's able to infer what the right data type should be. Sam, I can't believe you didn't type that out by hand. <laughs> I am a little upset by that. Sorry, I'm a lazy. Person. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> that just means he's a successful engineer. Yeah, so That's you will true. see exactly. that. Cut and paste. That's right. Uh, <laughs> you can see the SQL that gets created. So you can now create a skipping index. Oh, what do you see? It's, it's a real index. You have a n number of shards, a number of replicas. And you're saying it's auto refresh. So it keeps refreshing at a 15 minute interval. Okay. And it creates checkpoints every 15 minutes. Uh, so it kind of knows and it where it is. the path where it's logging them, right? Yes. So it yeah. yeah. So yeah. you ideally want this to be a separate location from where your source data was, right? So mm -hmm. I have my S3 logs in right. a bucket. This is something you keep isolated and separate. This is for us to figure out this, as I say, it's a checkpoint. When did we last do a refresh? Where did yeah. we start from, right? So 
we don't keep refreshing all of the data. Oh. You only keep refreshing the newer Just data. the new stuff, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And best practice to keep them separate from that data. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You want to, ideally, you want a new, uh, okay, I'm having network issues. So ideally, you want a separate new bucket. So it's just system data, if you will. Yeah. This is not no, usable data. Absolutely. Yeah. So now I've gone to the query workbench, and I can see all my data sources, right? So here's my S3 glue connection, and the zero gel is the data source that I created and the tables you see. So I know that I have data in my Amazon S3. Try to cheat here by copy pasting, so let's just run this. I don't consider cut and pasting cheating, <laughs> by the way. I <laughs> Yeah, so behind the scenes, keep in mind, you know, what we're using is a serverless architecture that's powered by Spark. Okay. And so uh, all we're doing is we're behind the scenes, we've established connection to serverless infrastructure. It spins up on demand, so it's not always running. You're not getting charged for it. And the way that we build a product is by OCUs, which is a common term that we know for open search in the serverless environment for, you know, the, the serverless, uh, uh, you know, uh, search engine, and also open search ingestion, which also is another serverless product. So OCUs are the things that compute units that are used to power that query, and that's what you get billed by. Okay. But in the end, if you're not querying the data, we don't spin that infrastructure up. So it will spin up on demand, and then you can execute your queries, and once you're done, it scales back down to no cost. Yeah, that's the yeah. ideal, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. only spin up when it's needed. And using the serverless environment as well, I think a lot of people out there, it leaves kind of less that you have to think about yep. uh, for customers and you know, obviously in this case for, for us as we do the query. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so that's why it takes a little time the very first time you spin it oh, up. Oh, that's fine. Right? And then yeah. we hold it open for three minutes, so we are ready for any other queries that you might run immediately. Oh, right? okay. So it's not like you run a query, it's immediately going to shut off because that's going to make for a bad experience. We do hold the session open for you to run subsequent queries and so on. Okay, yeah. so you have it open for three minutes, so you could run a subsequent session, and yeah. then it. <coughs> sorry. Well, you know, actually, it'll, it'll 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 stay open if if there's a little period of activity after three minutes, and the connection yeah. will get closed. So, it isn't like we're going to open up a connection, run for three minutes, and then you close it, <laughs> and then you have to do it again. No, and we're pretty smart about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it kind of has been optimized for that customer experience, if you will. Exactly. Uh, and based upon that feedback. That's happened. So, do you, speaking of feedback, have we have you received uh, any feedback, customer feedback about the feature since you since it's been launched? We have actually. We've had uh, you know since our uh, initial preview launch at reInvent in 2023. Okay. Um, we've had a multitude of customers that have played with this, have given us feedback on the product, have you know uh, elucidated the uh, the things that they'd like to see with the feature yeah. set, and we've taken all that input. Now, we did release in 2.11, so you have had access to this if you've looked at the tool. But we've done many improvements, worked on the integration, added a lot more features and capabilities to that initial thing based on customer feedback. Overall, it's positive. And, and, and when you really think about it, getting access to that long tail data is sort of like, uh, you know, the golden acorn, right? Yeah. It's, no. it's really what people are looking for to help them manage getting a somewhat quicker access to data that's sitting on S3 without standing up other tools or standing up any additional infrastructure that might cost more money. Well, Which, unfortunately, we've got about okay. 20 seconds okay, left, cool. so yeah. I've got to uh, I've got to wrap us up here. Right. Uh, but Joshua just uh, dropped in chat a link for everyone to go check out more information about Zero ETL with Open Search and S3. Kevin, Sam. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. you guys having us on. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be back. Stick around. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.